So many people come up to me and ask about range and then comment, well, when EVs can do a thousand mile on a charge and they can charge in less than five minutes, I'll have a look at them. Till then, they simply don't work for me. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On, where we look at the myths and misconceptions of the EV world, bring you all the latest news. Now, there are two quick replies that I'm always tempted to use when asked about range. First, how many miles does your petrol car do on a full tank? Well, they never know. But it's absolutely nowhere near a thousand miles, probably near a three or four hundred. Second, I ask, what's the longest single journey you've ever done non-stop? Well, that's different is the usual reply. The answer, if you can get one, is usually around two or three hundred miles. But it isn't different. The majority of drivers drive 8,000 miles a year in the UK, which is 160 miles a week and only do long journeys, say 200 miles or more, a handful of times a year. Most budget EVs can comfortably do between 150 and 200 miles on a single charge, with high spec models doing 300 or more. This means you only have to charge just once a week and once for each long journey. Yeah, once a week if you can't charge at home, compared to, oh yeah, filling up around once a week with petrol. But it takes hours to charge, I hear you shout. No. Usually takes less than an hour, often 15 minutes. The majority of drivers with absolutely no access to home charging can keep going by plugging their EV into a rapid charger for just one hour, once a week, while they do their weekly supermarket shop, or get their hair done, or watch a film at the cinema, or indulge in a bit of retail therapy, or eat their lunch in a rest, or have a non-alcoholic drink or two at their local, or while they... Well, I think you get the message. Instead of standing there in the cold and wind and rain, like you do filling your tank full of petrol, breathing in toxic deadly fumes, just plug your car in when you're stopping anyway, you'll never need to stand around. It takes less than 30 seconds to plug it in, then you walk away, leave it to it. On your return, it takes less than 15 seconds to unplug. 45 seconds is an awful lot quicker than five minutes standing there holding a petrol nozzle and then queuing to pay at the till. The main problem people have with EVs is that they treat them exactly the same as petrol or diesel cars. They've become so used to standing around while they fill up that they automatically just do exactly the same when they get an EV. Stop it! If you can charge at home, then plug in each night for off-peak cheap electricity. It's by far the cheapest motoring you can ever do, and you'll rarely, if ever, need to charge anywhere else. Running costs can be as little as 5p a mile, equivalent to a petrol diesel car doing about 150 miles to the gallon. But if you can't charge at home, just coincide a weekly trip that you're doing anyway, anyway with a single charging session. Use ultra rapid 150 kilowatt plus chargers for the fastest and most convenient, but they're also the dearest. Price per mile will be near uh, probably 17p, equivalent to a car doing 40 or 50 mile per gallon petrol diesel. The best pop compromise if you can't charge at home is to find a Type 2 slow charger, 7 to 11 kilowatt, and leave it plugged in overnight. My local Tesco has no parking restrictions and the price works out at 7 to 9p per mile. It's equivalent to a petrol car doing 80 to 100 miles per gallon. Type 2 slow chargers are installed everywhere. Car parks, public parks, restaurants, pubs, retail parks, hotel. Oh, by the way, while I think about it, some restaurants and hotels not only install chargers, but they offer them for free. Yeah, you heard, totally free to guests. Where was I? Oh yeah, cinemas, farm shops, theme parks. That, again, you'll probably get the message. There are well over 40,000 chargers in the UK, increasing dramatically. If you cannot park at home and you're parking for several hours, simply plug it in. A three hour shopping trip can add 60 miles. Better still if you can find a free one. And when you travel further, say once a month to visit your Auntie Ethel, just make sure your car is charged up the night before and you probably won't need to stop en route, unless she lives in Edinburgh. And that's a separate video, the road trip. For the average motorist in the UK, charge overnight at home on a cheap off-peak electricity, or charge somewhere else just once a week if you can't. How difficult is that? One piece of advice, if you cannot charge at home and you do travel much more than 8,000 miles a year, then simply choose an EV with a longer range. 
two to three hundred miles if it's within your budget to make sure that you still only ever have to charge once a week. Also, if you can't charge at home, make sure you choose an EV with faster charging. Some basic models can only charge you 50 kilowatts. Others can go up to 350 kilowatts. That's seven times faster. Same miles, same price, just ridiculously quicker to charge. It really is that simple. Some EVs can add 200 miles of range in about 15 minutes. Imagine that charge once a week only for 15 minutes that's hardly enough time to drink a cup of coffee oh just had a thought instead of using the drive through at your local coffee retailer or fast food restaurant why not pull into the car park plug into a rapid charger walk into the shop to buy your coffee or meal over the counter you could add 100 150 maybe 200 mile range by the time you get back to your car and you get a bit of exercise it's healthier all it takes is a bit of thought and a bit of common sense. An EV is not a fossil fuel powered car. Don't treat it like one. Now there are two major differences when it comes to charging an EV compared to filling a tank concerning what percentage you charge to. The first is cost. Charging on the road usually costs far more than charging at home or at your destination. So ask yourself, do you really need to charge at all? If so, how much is the minimum you can get away with? An example is called for here. I often holiday in the Lake District. It's about 100 miles away. I usually stay in holiday rental properties, Airbnb, many of which advertise EV charging, which actually is free, it's included in the rent. The night before we set off, I charge my car at home to about 70 or 75 on my off-peak uh, cheap rate, and arrive at the holiday property with less than 25% battery remaining. For the rest of my stay, my EV charging is free. I set off home, I'll top it up to 90, 95% free. Free is cheaper than my off-peak. Many hotels and restaurants do have free charging so aim to arrive with a very low battery charge. Just think before you charge, how can you make it cheaper? If I'm heading home and running really low, I will often stop for literally five minutes. Just enough at say 40 p per kilowatt hour in the supercharger to get me home, I can then plug it in and top back up at 14 p. The second is, my, is charging speed as opposed to charger rated speed. Batteries, complex chemical storage devices, most of which don't like or need to be charged to 100% every single time you fill up. They will charge amazingly quickly up to about 75-80% then dramatically, really dramatically slow down. Charging from nearly flat to 80% might take around 40 to 60 minutes in a typical budget EV, 15 minutes in a higher spec model, but then take an extra hour to get from 80% to 100%, making nearly two hours in total. Every single battery does this, so why on earth wait that extra hour just to reach this mythical 100%? It's crazy. So as a general rule or a habit, try to run the battery down to 15, 20% before charging, lower if you don't mind orange or red lights showing on your display, and then only charge back up to 75, 80%. But break this rule, charge far less if your destination has cheap or free charging. That even applies to road trips unless there are no charges anywhere en route when you take your lunch break. And why would you plan like that anyway? And your destination also likewise has no free charging or any charging. A special mention here needs to be made for LFP batteries. These are lead iron phosphate, uh, which are becoming much more common. Unlike older style batteries, which are damaged by repeat fast charging and charging to 100%, LFP batteries thrive on it with no damage and reduction in lifespan. Still, on a road trip, only charge to what you need, usually 75-80% on route, but then charge to the full 100% at your destination while you're asleep. But read your manufacturer's handbook. Thanks for watching to the end. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. It really helps. Check out other videos that are listed below.